uh, proud of the guys um, from start to finish. The effort, the energy, and the engagement was high. Um, we weren't always uh, on point defensively. Um, they have a lot to do with that because they're such a talented group of guys. Um, at halftime, we had 14 assists and 14 offensive rebounds. I think a lot of the tone for the game was set there. Our willingness to share the ball and our aggressiveness on the offensive glass is uh, that's an example of us. You know, we talk a lot during the year about doing what we practice. And in those two areas, that is what we did. And for the most part, defensively, we were active. And we're trying to get to a level where our, our communication is elite. And I thought tonight was one of the best jobs we did defensively from a communication standpoint. It, always, it wasn't always great execution-wise, but we made a lot of plays. And a lot of times, the, you know, stuff had been made about us holding people under 40%, which we want to establish that. But uh, I, I think creating as many turnovers as we created uh, makes that a little bit uh, deceptive with 19, 19 turnovers that they had. And then when you, when you add in the 17 offensive rebounds, those, those numbers certainly are good in our favor. Um, what did you think of Ricardo's uh, shooting performance tonight? Um, Ricardo does that every day in practice. I mean, there's no surprise. He did it last year in practice. That was never a question. Um, you know, I've talked to you guys about the day Ricardo came into my office and said, you know what, I had the wrong mindset, and I get it now. And he's become a little bit of a leader for us. Not only is he talking, he's saying the right things, and he's backing it up with his actions. Um, and so now you guys get to see what we see in practice. But a lot of guys can score that can't help you win. And right now, he's... He stepped into winning and being a winning player, and uh, the scoring is a part of what he does. But right now, he's doing a lot more than just scoring basketball. But that part is really not a surprise. And then the the high level of offensive play today. Um, what what did you see that you know really helped the team get to that that level in this game? Was it the extra pass? Was it the guys mentioned deep uh, turnovers? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean 28 assists. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that that's a big deal. We still had a lot of turnovers, but it was a really high possession game. Um, I thought uh, the latter part of the second half, and we said coming out of timeout, there's going to be a lot more random traps. And so we're going to have to get to what we call our red spots. We didn't do a great job with it, but BJ's ball handling really was critical in the game. BJ led us between BJ and Chuck. You know, last year we always talked about Jalen and Zurich always being the ball handlers. And now they're our third and fourth ball handlers as opposed to our top two guys. So collectively, I think we've got a, a more skilled backcourt. So we wanted them to trap us, and that was our message. We, we want them to open up the floor, get the ball to the open guy, and let's, let's go play. And uh, we talked a lot about playing without hesitation coming into the game because they give you some different looks. They do a lot of switching, and then the random trapping, and some matchup zone. And you could get stuck trying to figure out what to run, and I think we did a good job of playing without hesitation. So after today's win, y'all keep a perfect record alive in February 6-0, played with a lot of confidence today. But how will you make sure with these big games coming up that that confidence doesn't lead to a sense of complacency? We play Florida Atlantic next. And then we play South Florida after that. Um, so I, I, I'm not concerned about that. I do think with young people who are really experiencing winning in real time and learning how to win, that. Certainly, you want to make sure that they do a good job of turning the page, whether it's a difficult loss or an exciting win like tonight. But that's that's always the case. You know, no, no matter how well you're playing, you always have to try to turn the page. And I, I think these guys have done a good job of being engaged, and that's the reason why we only play the way we play. Yeah, what have you seen from FAU and USF? You know, if you've been able to watch much of them so far in league play uh, in particular. Very little this year. I've seen actually more of USF than I've seen of FAU. I caught some of the Arizona game. I, I try not to watch conference games of opponents that we're not going to see for a while. I, I do not want to contaminate my mind with uh, worries about guys that we're not going to see for a while. I don't need to be thinking about John L. Davis back in January. You know, it, you know we, we have enough problems between now and then. So. Um, but now we, we know how good they are. Uh, we know how good of a job they do. 
and they're coming off a tough loss. So we're going to see a pretty good version of them. So we'll have our work cut out for us for sure. The effort on the glass tonight, can you attribute that to anything? Was it scheme? Was it effort? Zerk mentioned the guys were pretty, they, they took the loss to Memphis earlier this year personal. Did, did you see them just kind of turn it up a little bit more? Even? As far as the rebounding, I mean, that, that's an emphasis. And generally in coaching, you get what you emphasize. We haven't always gotten it. And that's part of our growth as a team for them to see, you know, really internalize the value of being aggressive on the glass and what it can do for your team. And, and uh, tonight was a good example of why we need to do that and we need to carry that forward. Um, last time I asked you about Jackson Young's shot selection, it wasn't as good, but what did you think about the one at the end there? I was happy for him. You know, anytime you get in those situations and, and one of those young people get a chance to score a basket, it, it, uh, you know, what happens with Trey and, and Jackson, and I think this is true throughout the country when you have great young people that are committed to your team and they don't get the opportunity to play as much, that the one thing everybody on the team has in common is how they feel about those guys. And uh, when those guys get an opportunity to do something, because they're working in practice every day, and so when they get an opportunity to get on the court, whether they score or not, but then when they score, it's always neat to watch the rest of the guys because because uh, they care about those guys so much. So that that's always cool. In the atmosphere of today, uh, what did you think of, of the crowd and, and just you know obviously the the. I mean, it, it's, it, it was phenomenal. It's what I saw on TV back you know in 2012, 2013 when I was in Austin. That uh, that was my image of SMU. It reminded me of the Northeast, the Atlantic Ten Conference, like I. And that, that's what I was seeing, and, and tonight it felt that way. And, you know, our goal is to get to a point where that becomes the norm, regardless of who we're playing. That that uh, that our fans come out by and large to see us play. Um, but I really experienced Moody Magic tonight. Really, for real, that was that was special for sure. Anything else? All right. Thank you.